Hi everyone, this is Zarko and in this video we're going to be installing Git and Git Bash on Windows. So first thing that you should do is open the link that I'll share in the description of this YouTube video. So find that link, get it opened up and you should see uh, this page here. So on this page we're going to find the downloads page link for Git uh, on Windows. Uh, so the Git installation includes the Git Bash terminal as part of it as well. Uh, so make sure to follow this link here and it will take you to this Git downloads page as I mentioned. So here typically you can just click this download for Windows button so, so it should be uh, pre-selected already. If for some reason you're not getting results that you expect here, uh, you can manually select Windows here and then you can pick this standalone installer option here. Uh, you have two options, so 32-bit and 64-bit. So this is based on your operating system. If you're not sure, uh, you can click on the start button, then type in system. And uh, don't choose the system information option, but find this uh, system option. So you can kind of identify it by this, uh, this different icon here. Uh, so click on that and here check the system type and you'll see either 64-bit or 32-bit commonly. Uh, so based on that, you can actually select your download. So I have this 64-bit version of Windows. So I'll just close it out here. So I'll select 64-bit here. Again, if you had 32, then you would select that option. Uh, so now, now the download started and it quickly finishes. Uh, so you can start this git exe file to start the installation process from your downloads folder after that and here you're going to get this user account control pop-up from windows uh, you can click yes here and that will start the installation process here you have the license uh, term agreement you can read it and then you can click next here and now it's asking for the uh, destination location here uh, so i'll just choose the default one you can also choose that unless you have any specific other preference and then you can click next as well on this screen uh, you can choose if you want the icon on the desktop you can choose that also if you're using windows terminal in the newest windows versions you can uh, pick that as well and then click next but uh, also to note here uh, by the time you watch this video uh, these options could change if you're not sure if something is different then just choose the default options and you don't need to change anything so you can uh, then click next here uh, here the start menu folder you can leave it as git uh, then uh, then click next again now here it's asking uh, you to choose the default text editor used by git uh, so you can click on this menu here uh, if you identify for example your code editor that you're using then you can select that for example uh, visual studio uh, code, uh, then you would select this uh, this option here, or maybe you're using Sublime Text, you can choose that. If you're not sure, if you're not using any of these uh, options really, then you can just uh, exit out of it and just leave this Vim option, so the default one. Uh, then you can click Next again. And now we're going to run into a series of uh, options that we can choose from during the installation process. I kind of mentioned this already, but this installation process, I've seen it change a lot as new versions of Git come out. They're not significantly different, but they kind of do often uh, suggest different options here. Uh, so if something is different by the time you're watching this video and you're not sure what to choose, that just choose the default option and just click next. Okay, so we can get started here. Uh, for this specific option, the name of the initial branch. Uh, so there's a kind of a new standard here. So I like to select the second option here and then leave main, or, or if it's not written already, you can write main as the default branch name for new repositories. Uh, so select that, make sure this is specified here, and then you can uh, click next again. Now regarding adjusting your path environment, you can just leave this uh, default option here, then click next again. For the SSH executable, you can also leave the default option again, so click next. For this HTTPS transport backend, also leave the, the default option, click next once more. For configuring the line ending conversions, you can just also leave uh, the pre-selected option, then click next again. For the terminal 
emulator you can leave it use minty uh, so then click next again as for the default behavior of git pull uh, you can just again <laughs> just choose the pre-selected option so there's a lot of that uh, you can choose uh, the git credential manager here for the credential helper click next once more uh, some extra options here yeah just again just leave the default one and then you can finally click the install button here and wait for it until it finishes Again, by the time you're watching this video, if you see any other options, just leave the default. The default one that it offers to you, just click next there. Unless you know specifically you want to choose anything else. But again, if you're not sure, yeah, just leave the default ones. Now it has finished. Uh, we can uh, untick this if you don't want to see the release notes. And then you have an option here to launch Git Bash. So that's one option here, but yeah, I'll just uh, click finish. And uh, we can close this out. We don't need this anymore. To launch Git Bash, if you selected the icons option from the installation from the beginning, then you can run it from here. Or if you haven't uh, done that, then you can click on the Windows Start menu and then just type in Git Bash. And you can see this Git Bash app here. Uh, so you can select that uh, to start the Git Bash terminal. So here uh, you can actually use this as a terminal for doing your developer work, for example. So if you type in the git command and space dash dash version, you should see the version that you just installed uh, be returned here. So that's fine. And that's basically, you know, you would be ready to, to use git on your computer from this point. So let's just quickly test it out. Let's uh, do mkdir. That stands for make directory a command in the terminal. So let's just say test project. And then we can do CD. So change directory to test project. And let's say hypothetically, this is some project that you're creating. Uh, maybe we create one file here. So let's say touch, I don't know, like app.js. So for JavaScript, but it could be whatever uh, files you need for your project. Uh, then you, to initialize a Git repository, you would type in Git space in it and this will create one for you here seems like that's working uh, then to make your first commit you would or you could do this so git space add space a dot that means add everything from the current directory which will be this this uh, app.js file that we created here and then you can do git commit space dash m then uh, quotes here so let's say initial commit so that's the commit message so you can describe describe it but uh, yeah this uh, tutorial is not focused on uh, the git uh, usage instructions basically so this is just the installation part uh, so you can study that later on but yeah on your first commit here it's going to ask you to identify yourself uh, so you can do this git config dash dash global user dot email uh, so you can set that to your email uh, you could copy this and then paste it down here and then just uh, right arrow to unselect it. So on your keyboard, then you can write your email for example, Zarko at, I don't know, like uh, test.com, whatever. Uh, you can choose whatever email you want here. And then you can also specify your name for your Git repository here. Uh, so I'm just doing the same thing. So right click here and paste and then uh, the right arrow on your keyboard just to deselect uh, this uh, content that we pasted. Uh, so I just, I'm just going to type Zarko here and we have configured the kind of the Git username and email as well. Uh, so that's fine there. So yeah, that's basically pretty much it for the Git installation part on Windows. Uh, so again, be sure to study the usage instructions for Git and Git Bash as well. You can research it online, for example. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching this installation guide and uh, hope to see you in the next video. If you found this video useful, please take a second to like the video, to subscribe to my channel, of course, it means a lot. And yeah, I'll see you in another video. So thank you, everyone. Bye.